back in 86 when I applied uh, for my MPhil in computer science here. Uh, I think in the country, very few institutions had uh, degrees in computer science. And uh, um, so uh, I did come and that, uh, that was the first time. Before that, I didn't realize uh, the privileges that I enjoyed because I come from uh, Central India, uh, to the tribes. Uh, in the Quran tribe, so I really didn't know what the privileges of being a tribe uh, is or uh, in education space because that was the first time my name had this uh, the you know postfix of ST, and prior to that I think I didn't need it, so it was not there. So never mind. I mean that was the constitutional provision, and JNU exercised it then also. It be back in '86. I got admission here, so therefore. And I'm trying to uh, uh, pin down that there was this possibility of access. Now, how difficult or easy that again has uh, different uh, you know, journeys to testify. But therefore, access through these provisions, JNU had, and those who came to the campus before me would also tell uh, testify how it was. You know, so those uh, constitutional provisions, or let's say, if not, it was it was not mandatory. Even if it was not mandatory then, but then JNU had uh, that flavor, uh, the openness, uh, or affirmative action. If there are all these nicer words also to um, present that, uh, that commitment, uh, that, right? So access was there. However, now justice. Um, now, I'd like to mention when I joined in 92 as a faculty, and then uh, I think it wasn't, a bit, JNU had not implemented reservation at even assistant professors post oh, that oh, way back in 92. Oh, no, 92. So then, time and again, and those of us who joined before that, I think Diplet would testify, a number of us who joined before 96 would say that although we had we had certain social background and the posts advertised were unreserved, why the university was you know uh, trying to be a champion in uh, fulfilling reservation, you know that way. So because that was one. Well, just to state the facts, I have no problem. But then the conversations that I had to overhear. Uh, you know, once I could overhear a conversation, how wo to ST hai? Then other person realized that I could overhear because this conversation was happening just two cabins away and we didn't have a close ceiling. So the other person said, No, 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 but it's very good. Okay, I'm just trying to uh, only mention 75 years of independent India. Education have it taking its own, you know, um, um, land uh, milestones to achieve, and maybe not achieve too. But having come thus far today, but I'm talking about, uh, you know, this of uh, so uh, 30 years, right? 30 years ago, uh, I think the, the the social fabric which impacts not only our um, you know, decisions, but our conversation has been so, uh, I will not say insensitive, but then so blunt and that it, one doesn't realize that how certain words could impact the, it, uh, this is not again discrimination, this is just stating facts, right? But how, the, how one is being judged, you see? So that's about, uh, you know, not not treating anybody equal or as per the because there was an assistant professor's job in computer science, right? So not uh, judging me as an assistant professor in computer science, but then to getting to whatever is not written, <laughs> I find that a bit um, uh, you know misfit, and therefore uh, how justice has a long way to go. I'm sure number of students. Because uh, those days the campus was not so thickly populated. I was in Godavari Hostel right from the beginning and managed to get a single room. So therefore, uh, you know, didn't have to negotiate on a daily basis or even to 
interact with another roommate because I understand because I've been uh, um, advisor of equal opportunity of the chief advisor of equal opportunity office for two years, proctor for four years, even prior to that advisor in an equal opportunity office and the stories just rend my heart. Because the in insensitive conversation or the terms that have been used because I have heard those stories from students. They didn't even react when one tried to mitigate and told the other person, listen, you know, you said this. The person said, yes, huh? You know, I mean, there, there was no, uh, there was, I mean, the person admitted because, you see, but didn't realize until it was told that this is not done. It, you see, so that's acha hai. So, you know, so edu how, what has education done to us? What has education in 75 years done in, in this country as far as if education is empowerment or power and equalizer it isn't done that so where is so the justice is still a, a, you know a far fetched goal to yet achieve and I think those the students who are here most of you would align with some of our stories that you are here because probably your parents were literate probably I'm saying because they, we would have a full-scale first-generation uh, learners also. And I think those who have been able to make it to JNU, majority of us who have been from, you know, margins of the society are second generation. So it was the, it was the vision of the first generation which managed to help us either keep isolated with some of the day-to-day uh, the -day struggle or if not, at least helped us face them and then come this far. So therefore, I really, I want to congratulate all the students and teachers who are here because our previous generation did that. And, and most of you would, you would, I'm sure, say you are only a second generation who, and I'm only a second generation who went to school beyond class 10. No, be, yeah, be, be beyond class 4 from my father's side. Okay, my father went to, was the first one to go beyond class 4 and I'm the second. Uh, and so on. So the point is, the e again, I'm still again establishing that education is the equalizer and can help us bring us here if uh, opportunities are not missed. Why am I saying so? Now let me come to Dumka. <laughs> Take you on to Dumka, which is a small town. You can walk the entire market. It's probably smaller than Munirga, or maybe as big as Munirga, the the uh, the, the market there. And so nice, lazy town, air, water, everything is fresh. So that's the best thing that would happen to me in, to, uh, at uh, COVID. Um, yes. Now, I would like to come to opportunity. The first year when there, there were admissions in undergrad, and uh, again, it has the same picture uh, but uh, Sachi mentioned about any Mokhsil college, <coughs> etc. Yeah, most of the students are only asking for notes to teachers who themselves may not have access to the books uh, because libraries are there but now I'll come to that a little later but then access out of 20,000 27,000 odd so let's say less than 28,000 who took admission in um, um, uh, 28 colleges for the U, uh, the BABSC BCom can you guess how many would have been for science I'll start with the most depressing uh, faculty, okay? Commerce with 700 and odd. Out of 20, let's say, let me underestimate 27,000. Okay, now let me come to the next. Science, 3,700 and something, okay? Now, here is the question of opportunity. I do agree with Harish and uh, the, when we talk about the vocabulary, which can be so overloaded, which is, not uh, uh, or is uh, uh, the students coming from uh, little remote uh, places are not familiar with. Now here is a dis here is a discipline science which doesn't have overloaded words. Subtra uh, subtraction means subtraction. <laughs> okay, sine theta means sine theta. That's a math. Even in chemistry, physics, everything, and any discipline of science does not have more than one meaning why such subjects are not 
you know, why have they not reached the students? They are still away from the students. They are not up to, you know, all those schools where students could just attend. Plus two. Why, why is it the, the school is because plus two. These subjects are not in the same proportion they are in plus two being taught at least in my uh, region, Santal Pargana. I will not try to claim for in the rest of Jharkhand. So it, having said that, if these subjects were, which are so easily understandable, not being available to all, and I would like to again add an, an anecdote. In my class one, when I took admission, of course Hindi is not my mother tongue by now, you know. But otherwise, I couldn't understand in anything except probably addition, subtraction and multiplication. Because Hindi, that was the only thing that was <laughs> taught probably. And arithmetic, okay. And civics, you know, from we had our classes outside. So that was interesting, but I could not deal with the language that was the medium of instruction. But only thing I understood was arithmetic. And if arithmetic is not taught in all of these schools in class 1 also, let, I'm also uh, right now not uh, also for these preschools being so active that students are ready at the age 6. So, so therefore they are right in the, uh, when they enter school they are prohibited from these disciplines, these subjects which would not be uh, you know, over, which would not have overloaded words. So therefore, um, the question is that of the opportunity. And these opportunities, 75 years, and these opportunities have not become equal. Even, like, you know, you go certain distance from the main town. And so, access is still a question. If the schools are there, let us not be happy. I mean, I, I keep telling the public representative. I'm just not happy that by the numbers of schools and it, they should not be happy by the number which you know passes out but we need to see the sections or you know some group, uh, subsets of this this number how many are there you know is there an equal opportunity to study any subject and so therefore I have all respect and I I actually admire all those who study uh, social science because I think I wouldn't have been able to deal with it and I, my <laughs> inclination is that. But the point I'm making is access is still a, a, a matter. And the devil when access is not uniform at least in certain region or you go certain distances from a main town, and justice is, anyway, still remains a bigger question.
Way back in 86 when I applied uh, for my MPhil in computer science here.